on CBS 46 News at 5. Look at this on fire for real. I know it's all right because the wing was like this. I saw it come straight down out of the air. A corporate jet goes down in a park in Atlanta. There are no survivors. Crazy. <laughs> Typical Atlanta. Picking up and dropping off your loved ones can be difficult at the airport, but we're breaking down what you need to know to get through it easily. I'm going to wear my windshield wipers before I get home. <laughs> Mark this on the calendar. I'm not traveling again at Christmas. We're in the CBS 46 at Road Tracker. Keep an eye on the roads for you throughout the shows. Allegations against a Cherokee County High School English teacher. I'm Yasmina Alston with the charges he's facing. The state Senate has new recommendations to help regulate service dogs. What that could mean for our vets coming up. We begin with breaking news. First at five, a plane crashes. It bursts into flames in Atlanta. Dead are three people. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Sharon Reed. And I'm Sean Gables. Right now, the NTSB is working to find out what caused the plane to go down. The plane crashed in English Park in northwest Atlanta just moments after the plane took off from Fulton County Field just after noon today. We have team coverage beginning with CBS 46's Adam Murphy. He arrived on the scene just moments after the crash. Adam, you got some incredible video. What have you learned since then? Well, first of all, the NTSP and the FAA have been out here all day trying to investigate what went wrong with this corporate jet that went down. Let me give you a perspective. You'll see right here there are football lights on the football field that are lit up so investigators can get a real good look at what happened here. And the scene is quite expansive across this football field here at English Park. And again, at this point in time, investigators plan to work around the clock to try to determine exactly what happened. But still, at this point, it is unclear why the jet went down. When I ran over here, I was trying to see if I see somebody I could help out, but I ain't see nothing but just spot. Reggie Taylor witnessed the unimaginable on Thursday while driving in Atlanta traffic around noon. Man, me, I'm shook up. I just pray, you know what I mean? I, I pray as, as the plane was going down because I knew someone right. A corporate jet just like this fell out of the sky right before his eyes. I said, I'm riding up, coming toward 285, and all I think I see a plane just shooting down. You know what I'm saying? But I know someone right because the wing was like this, so whoever was driving it, they had control of it. The aircraft crashed on this football field at English Park within one minute of takeoff from Charlie Brown Airport in the area. There were three people on board and all were killed. The aircraft is basically completely destroyed. It spread out about, about 100 yards uh, and it looks like it slid through the field. Investigators said debris from the plane caused some damage to a nearby home, but no one in that home was injured. I was down the street at work and we heard a loud boom and the door shook and we kind of looked at each other. I, mean, I feel bad for their families, especially, like I said, being right before the holidays. This is a live look at the tail to that aircraft on the football field. The damage is widespread. There's debris everywhere, and federal authorities have not released the names of those on board the aircraft, nor confirmed the final destination of that flight. Now, we have been looking into that information all afternoon, and at this point in time, we are waiting on authorities to confirm what information we have been gathering. And as soon as we get more details, we'll have that for you right here on CBS 46. We're live at English Park in Atlanta. Adam Murphy, CBS 46 News. All right, Adam, keep working your sources there. Meantime, our live team coverage continues with this breaking news right now. CBS 46's Brittany Edney is in the neighborhood where the plane crashed. Brittany, tell us about the reaction there. Well, Sharon, just to kind of give you some perspective on where I'm standing right now, I'm on the opposite side of where Adam was, about 100 yards from the wreckage of that football field. But I want to show you just how close that plane came to possibly crashing into some of these homes. Where this street is that you're looking at right now, it is Bolton Road. And all along it are dozens of homes. They're pretty closely spaced together. And resident Willie Morns, who's joining me now live, you were just sitting in your home watching some TV when you heard a loud noise. Describe to me what you heard. Well, like you say, I was sitting at home watching TV and I heard a loud noise. I thought it was thunder. And uh, I decided to get up because the thunder was awful loud. And when I got up and went to the door, I could see a big flame over here. And uh, I decided to, well, at first, I, once I seen the flame, I thought it was a car, really. I thought a car had blown up. 
So I decided to walk over to the park. And, and that's I, when you saw a big line of fire. A line of fire, yes, over here. There was a line of fire all the way across the football field. So uh, I said to myself, there must have been a gas line that exploded. And then that's when you heard that it was actually a plane that crashed. Um, yes, to sir. know that it came that close to these rows of homes, uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, when I did find out that it was a plane crash, well, you know, you got to say to yourself, thank God that it didn't hit the neighborhood over here, you know, all these houses. And, uh, you know, that's about all I can really say is we're just blessed, you know, because it could have been us. You know, we'll never know what was going through the minds of that pilot and the crew in those final moments. But to see that pilot navigate to that open space, I mean, do you think maybe uh, that says something about his ability, character, possibly intention to get that open field and not these homes that you live in? Well, it had to say something about his character. He had to be a good person because uh, and, and he had to have good pilot experience, too because uh, he could have easily uh, hit these homes or he could have uh, landed out there in, uh, in the street in the traffic, you know. So a person like that, he had to be willing to sacrifice his own life for someone else's. Whatever the cause is, as we continue to wait for more details to come out, it's definitely very difficult. We're going to continue to stay on the story and bring you more details as they become available. Reporting live, Brittany Edney, CBS 46 News. Brittany, thanks so much. We just got our hands on the air traffic control transmissions, and you can hear the tower giving the plane instructions. They got no response. Listen. Citation 8, Charlie Whiskey, left turn to 3 one Contact the line CBS 46 going in depth right now. Let's take a closer look at the kind of plane that crashed. It is a Cessna Citation V, also known as the Model 560. It is a business jet. It was first introduced in 1987. The upgraded Citation Ultra, that was announced in September 1993. That jet is often known as one of the safest for a private aircraft. Now, let's take a look at what we do know so far. The corporate jet crashed in English Park from within a takeoff uh, from Fulton County's Charlie Brown Airport. It wound up on a football field and then burst into flames on impact, as you heard from Brittany Edney's live report with that eyewitness there. All three people on board the airplane have died. We will learn their names after next of kin have been notified. Now, we first told you about this crash through our CBS 46 News app. You can download it for free for instant updates on this and other big breaking stories. Right now, the holiday traffic rush is on. The wet weather is making travel just, well, miserable on the roadways and at the world's busiest airport. Whether you're traveling for the holidays or if you're picking someone up at the airport, look, yeah. you're going to feel the pain too. CBS 46 has you covered there. We have a team of reporters on the roads and at the airport advocating for you with advice on how to navigate this heavy holiday traffic. But let's start with CBS 46's chief meteorologist. Paul, I'm sure the rain's not helping out either. I was just out there. Traffic is miserable and if it's not raining, it's wet. And if it's not wet, it's breezy out there. So it's just an annoying rain and damp day out there. On the CBS 46 pinpoint radar, most of the activity is north of the city, but there's drizzle out there. There's low clouds and it's just very slick all the way from Dade Walker County's Murray County, all the way into the LJ area, Gainesville, all the way up into Rabin County. We zoom out, you see more on the way because this is lifting to the northeast. We even seen some heavier rain and even the thunderstorm that we saw earlier down by Montgomery near Monroeville. That is also moving moving toward Georgia. So we're not finished with the rain, putting it all in motion. You see how those heavier bands earlier are now moving into the Tennessee Valley, but there's more back to the southwest that's going to be moving through as well. So it's going to affect the morning commute, certainly for tomorrow. Temperatures in the 40s and mostly cloudy skies, windy and cold. Temperatures staying in the 40s. Not a great day tomorrow either. Let's get a check now on pinpoint traffic. Here's Julie. Smith. And as we've been talking about all afternoon, yeah, these wet roads and wet weather is really wreaking habit, especially with all these people out here uh, traveling for the holidays, maybe already getting out of town or coming into town or just shopping. So take extra precaution out there. Right now you're looking at 285. This is northbound at Camp Creek Parkway. You can see most of that traffic flowing okay, but those right lanes, very slow there. An accident north of that, which I'll show you in just a moment, is causing those delays. But I want to start north and make my way down to that area. So right here, Terrell Mill Road, we have an accident uh, right there at I-75. Two lanes blocked there. I-75 from there to uh, Cobb Cloverleaf, pretty slow as well. Then 285 northbound, this is at I-25. 20 or just before I 20 and as I said that's creating those delays all the way down to Camp Creek Parkway. That's your pinpoint traffic.
All right, Julie, thanks so much. It's going to be a busy weekend, too, on the roads and in the air. More than 112 million people are expected to travel for the holidays. CBS 46's Ayanna Cristo continues our team coverage from the Cool Ray Road Tracker. Ayanna, what are you seeing out there? Well, traffic has been up pretty bad today. You take into account the rain we've been getting and then additional people hitting the road getting to their Christmas destination. Let's give you a live look at what we're seeing. We're on 285 East, just passing the 20 exit, and it's been stopped and going for miles, so no real surprise there. Traffic is expected to continue to increase throughout Metro Atlanta because according to AAA, more than one third of Americans are traveling this holiday season. And of course, we will be your eyes on the road throughout the show. Let's send it back to the studio. All right, thank you, Ayana, and our team coverage uh, continues right now with CBS 46 is Vince Sims, who is live at Hartsville Jackson International Airport. And Vince, you know, look, I think you've been very nice about it. It stinks. <laughs> if you got to pick up anybody today, it stinks out there. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to deal with, but we are actually in that holiday travel period now. Tomorrow's going to get worse for it. That means that this traffic's going to get worse. So we decided to show you the easiest ways to get through it. Crazy. <laughs> Typical Atlanta. Dealing with the traffic at Hartsville Jackson International Airport may be a challenge whether you're coming. Oh, it was uh, it was a madhouse out here. Or going. Coming into the cones is making it a little hotter, so we had to get out in traffic, but it's okay. Some changes have been made at the airport. There's now a canopy in place to help keep passengers out of the elements. With canopy construction complete, all lanes of traffic are open. So now there's an inline pickup and drop off system. So if you're coming through, you can see we've got three and four lanes out here behind me. At its busiest point, you can stop in the middle of the road, provided the policeman says that you're able to do so, and then you can let people in and out rather than driving all the way over to the curb, which tends to impede traffic a little bit. Do you think it flows better now? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely, it does flow better. It goes a lot faster too. Let's take you for a drive to give you a few tips to try and help. Going towards the south terminal side, there's a cell phone lot. You can park there for free and wait until your passenger makes it to the curb. What do you think of this uh, traffic trying to get in and out of here? It's, it's pretty stiff, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's pretty stiff. If you want to avoid stiff, there is another area you can go to. If you're dropping people off, head to our lower north roadway. Just follow the signs. Lower north roadway, you come on in. It's hardly ever used. It's right below us, so you're this close to the terminal. But when you own the title of the world's busiest airport, there are some things you're just going to have to deal with. It's congested out here. Yes, it is. Now, another improvement also for the ride chair pickup here on the north side. It's moving a little bit closer, 750 feet closer. Reporting live at the airport, Vince Sims, CBS 46 News. All right, Vince, uh, patience, that's the key. You can also get CBS 46 pinpoint weather and traffic right in the palm of your hand. Just download our free CBS 46 app. A Metro Atlanta teacher is behind bars this afternoon. He is accused of inappropriate conduct with a student. Find out what CBS 46 News has learned about the teacher. If school's out holiday food looks a lot like this in your family, DeKalb County's got a better idea.
let's take another look at our pinpoint traffic camera. This time we've got it cornered on my favorite spot, Georgia 400. Yes. It shows love to you every day. It's like you got recurring <laughs> nightmares, isn't it? Relax. It's a recurring nightmare. This one is at uh, Abernathy Road traffic. At least it's moving. It's slow. You see a lot of tapping of the brakes, but we don't see any complete shutdowns, which is good. CBS 46's Julie Smith will have your pinpoint traffic update in just a few minutes. But first, a Cherokee County teacher in custody right now, accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Yeah, the teacher taught at Cherokee High School. That's in Canton. CBS 46's Yasmina Olson is there live. And Yasmina, tell us more. What have you learned about this one? Well, Sharon, an English teacher at Cherokee High School was arrested on Wednesday after accusations of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. In a letter to parents, the Cherokee County School District wanted everyone to be aware a teacher at Cherokee High School was arrested. This is 25 year old Jack Eisenman, an English teacher and boys head soccer coach. An anonymous tip to the district earlier this week alleged Eisenman was having an inappropriate relationship with a student. An investigation by the Cherokee County School Police Department immediately followed. Eisenman is now charged with sexual assault by a teacher and as of Thursday afternoon remained in custody without bond. In that letter, the district notes they take the safety and security of students very seriously and inappropriate behavior by staff towards students will not be tolerated. The Cherokee County School Police Department is continuing the investigation and therefore can't provide any additional details. We spoke to parents who didn't want to be on camera, but tell us it's shocking and not acceptable. And the school district says if your child has any information that could be helpful to this investigation, to contact the school district's police department. Live in Cherokee County, Yasmina Alston, CBS 46 News. Now, CBS 46 Pinpoint Weather, certified Atlanta's most accurate forecast. Well, we got the rain today. Let's check the weekend, see if it's going to be out of here in time. And it is. We'll start to see some clouds lifting. We'll start, we'll just call it uh, turning sunny on Saturday, a temperature of 50. There will be a slight chance of maybe a passing shower on Sunday. Otherwise, just partly cloudy skies and a temperature of 56 degrees. Here we go. CBS 46 pinpoint radar. It's been one of those sloppy days. I mentioned earlier that if it's not raining where you are, you're it's windy, it's wet, it's very uncomfortable out there. Temperatures in the 40s for the most part they will be that way for tomorrow as well. The rain will end though tomorrow by midday, but in the meantime, we're still dealing with light to moderate and certainly some sloppy conditions out there all the way across North Georgia mountains, all the way from Forsyth County back into Cherokee County, Canton and Woodstock area, all the way up to such as Helen back in White County and more on the way because this is all lifting to the northeast. We see these pockets of light precipitation moving closer to Carrollton back into Heard County, back in LaGrange area and heavier showers back into Montgomery. As we put it and show you this, this is a product that's exclusive to CBS 46 kind of takes the weather precipitation that's falling and potential road problems out there and where you see the green is where it's going to be wet it wet right now all the way from just the city of Atlanta North Fulton where you see these areas back in the Athens area you folks are dealing with a little bit of fog and low clouds out there as well so traveling not really great out there right now this is the break we're getting right now as far as the heavier precipitation mentioned we're tracking this line near Montgomery even when that's done we still have some more light rain back to the west there is a clearing though that's the good news we're seeing some clearing back in Oklahoma now into Arkansas East Texas and that's what will give us some relief as we get to tomorrow. Hour by hour we go. We'll pinpoint any rain moving in our direction. This is by eight o'clock. More rain moving in. You see those showers. Look at that heavy band by about five in the morning. So rush hour definitely going to have some showers, especially from Atlanta to the east side. Heads up for Gwinnett County to Cab County back into Rockdale County. And as we play through the afternoon and morning, we start to see the rain beginning to lift a little bit by the afternoon. And as we get to Friday night, we'll see just mostly cloudy skies. I mentioned earlier yesterday might see a snow flurry in extreme North Georgia, but otherwise mostly cloudy skies for Friday. Look at these current temperatures from 50 in Atlanta, 49 in uh, Carrollton, 54, not too bad for Eatonton and uh, Covington, and 50 in Griffin, 52 in Athens. Our high temperature today was 51 degrees, almost where we should be this time of year. And in North Georgia, places like Dahlonega to Jasper to LJ to Clayton to Gainesville, everyone in the 40s except for Canton with a temperature of 50 degrees. Here's our seven day forecast. The rain day easing up on Saturday and as we head to Monday and Tuesday. Not too bad. It makes the clouds and sunshine for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and better rain chance as we get to Thursday of next week. Let's get a check down pinpoint traffic. Here's Julie. 
And here's a live look on the top end of the perimeter. This accident, luckily off to the side. That is the good news. 285 westbound at Peachtree Dunwoody Road. You can see it over in the shoulder here. But again, that traffic is still piling up. Uh, our normal traffic, holiday travelers, shoppers. So uh, again, keep that in mind. I'll show it to you on the map in just a moment, but I wanted to start south in there and just show you the delays southbound on I-85 as you approach Georgia 400 near Cheshire Bridge Road. And that continues just past Georgia 400. Then moving from there up to uh, the top end of the perimeter, there is another accident to the east of the one I just showed you. So that one is 285 eastbound. This is near Ashford Dunwoody Road. So you've got delays behind that one going eastbound and as I said in the other direction westbound right there at Peachtree Dunwoody Road. So just uh, again take plenty of time to get to where you're going if you must run errands. Those drive times look at that westbound and eastbound in the red just 24 miles per hour westbound from Spaghetti Junction over to the Cobb Cloverleaf. Not much better. 30 miles per hour going the other direction. Maybe just That's stay in, Julie. Exactly. Have a cup of hot cocoa or something. Don't go out. You know, can you say, just say that one more time because it sounds hot good. Hot cocoa, <laughs> whipped cream, marshmallows. Have yeah. a And yeah. a big gallon of it, too. Yeah. All right. A setback today for disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein. Find out why a judge rejected his bid to get sexual assault charges dropped. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Edward Zimbinski, and I'd like to wish a happy holidays to my family and friends back in Kansas City, Atlanta, and Corpus Christi, Texas. Remember, track Santa with NORAD. Season's greetings to our troops and their families from all of us at Montlick & Associates. Disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein lost his bid to have sexual assault charges against him thrown out. CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen with details on what happened today. Former Hollywood heavyweight Harvey Weinstein arrived at the courthouse in New York Thursday morning, where a judge told him the case against him will proceed. We are uh, obviously disappointed uh, that the court did not dismiss the indictment. Among those in line to get into the courthouse, Oscar winner Marissa Tomei. 
Dozens of women have accused Weinstein of improper sexual behavior, sparking the Me Too movement. He is being prosecuted in two cases, charged with raping a woman he knew in a hotel room in March 2013 and forcibly performing oral sex on another woman in 2006. His lawyer took aim at the Me Too movement after the hearing. A movement should not, however, be permitted to push an indictment that is deeply flawed. Attorney Gloria Allred, who represents one of Weinstein's two accusers, swiftly hit back. This indictment was based on evidence and testimony before the grand jury. It was not based on the Me Too movement. Weinstein's lawyers had tried to get the case tossed, arguing that a police detective had acted improperly in the investigation, but the judge didn't buy it. Afterward, Weinstein's attorney called the judge's decision a technical ruling on the law and expressed confidence the former mogul will be completely exonerated. Tom Hansen, CBS News, New York. Schools may close over the Christmas holiday, but, but two school Go ahead, Sean. cafeterias will be open to make sure students and their loved ones, well, they want them to eat right. We're advocating for the health of your children tonight. Also, a state lawmaker says fake service dogs are giving legit service dogs a bad name. He intends, he says, to do something about it. Here's what's coming up tonight on CBS 46. Tune in at 8 for The Big Bang Theory, followed by Young Sheldon at 8.30. At 9, The Big Bang Theory again, followed by Murphy Brown at 9.30, then at 10, SWAT. And of course, stay up with us for CBS 46 News at 11. Tonight's primetime lineup sponsored by Harris, Cherokee and Harris, Cherokee Valley River. Now at 530, we're tracking rain that is making a mess of the afternoon commute. It's the same time we've got the holiday travel getting fired up. Yeah, it's not good timing, if you will. Live look, this is at the low hanging clouds over downtown and the rain is expected to stick around for a while longer. We do have you covered with pinpoint weather and traffic. We'll start with the chief meteorologist Paul Osman. Yeah, that doesn't look really advertising and appetizing when you look at this and see those lower clouds in the downtown area. 
And where you don't have this, you have certainly windy conditions and rain and drizzle and in some areas some fog. 50 degrees, more than an inch of rain so far at Hartsfield Jackson Airport and winds have shifted out of the west northwest now at eight miles per hour. CBS 46 pinpoint radar shows you the heavy stuff to the north and to the northwest, but even that includes places like Forsyth County coming, Dawson County back in the Lawrenceville area, and there's more back to our southwest that's moving to the northeast. So LaGrange getting some rain, eventually Coweta County and the city of Atlanta. If we put it all in motion, you see we're getting a break from the heavy rain, but in between windy conditions with more rain on the way. And tomorrow we're not going to see much change in temperatures. Temperatures may actually drop during the day, mostly cloudy sky, some rain. I think the rain will be ending though by midday, but certainly not one of those Chamber of Commerce days. But hang in there, the weekend a lot better. Talk about that in a second. Let's get a check now on pinpoint traffic. Here's Julie Smith. And not any better right now is the downtown connector, I-75 and 85 just north of the connector. So again, I, we've been talking about it all afternoon. It's always really rough this time of day, but then you add the holiday travelers coming into town or maybe heading out and people out and about shopping. So uh, take extra time getting to where you need to be and be extra cautious as well. So this is the connector at Cortland Street. You can see both directions, lots of brake lights there. Uh, that northbound traffic starts just past Langford Parkway. That's the worst of it. The northbound continues through the top of the Grady Curve. But as I said, I-75, look at that southbound near Collier Road, uh, passing after you get past Moore's Mill Road all the way, <clears throat> excuse me, down to I-20. And then moving over to the inner loop here, northbound 285. It starts south of Camp Creek Parkway. This has been really stubborn all afternoon. Those delays, solid red up to I-20. So just be prepared, folks. You're gonna need extra time. And as Sharon mentioned earlier, if you don't have to go anywhere, stay inside, drink the cocoa, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, some of us have to deal with it. All right, let's uh, follow some breaking news that we're following at this hour. Some political break uh, stories that have just broken in the last hour. State Senator Michael Williams indicted in Hall County. Let's get straight to the bulldog for the very latest. Chief Investigator Jonathan Carlson, you've been working on the story. What's the latest? Yeah, hey there, Sean. Senator Michael Williams made headlines during the race for governor for his deportation bus, you may remember. The indictment accuses Williams of insurance fraud, falsely reporting a crime, and making false statements. The Hall County DA telling me earlier today on the phone that the GBI was the investigating agency and was the agency that was lied to. Now we reached out to Williams. He hasn't been answering his phone. However, his former campaign manager did tell us, quote, this is a political witch hunt and a grand jury can indict a ham sandwich. We'll have much more coming up at six o'clock. Sean. All right, we will continue to look for that. Thank you, Jonathan. Email the bulldog with your tips at CBS46.com. Sharon. Sean, thank you. Here are some of the top stories we're working on right now at five. Charred metal. That's it. After a corporate jet slammed into the ground, it burst into flames. That jet rocked English Park in South Atlanta. Three people were on board. There are no survivors. The NTSB is now on the scene, and so are we. Live team coverage continues at six o'clock. A Cherokee County High School teacher is in jail with no bond right now. 25-year-old Jack Eisenman is charged with sexual assault after an alleged, well, assault of one of his students. Someone anonymously contacted the school district. The school district says they immediately investigated. All clear after closed roads and caution tape in Brookhaven, that neighborhood today. Police got on social media. They warned people to stay inside near Chowders Road and Shady Valley Drive. SWAT was on a drug sting nearby, we learned, and police told us there was no immediate danger. No one was hurt. What's on your kitchen table the day after Christmas or New Year's Eve? If it's leftovers, well, you have plenty of company, but for thousands of Georgians, it might be junk food or it may be no food at all. That is the wisdom behind a wealthy Atlantan who is behind the move to open up school cafeterias over the holiday break. CBS 46's reporter Sally Sears is in DeKalb County with a lesson in nutrition and generosity. DeKalb County school administrators acknowledge too many of their students don't eat well when school is out. Doritos and soda, that's what they said. In the busy apartments of thousands of DeKalb students, two weeks without a cafeteria can mean hunger. For many of our students, school is the stable place for them, says Administrator Vazan Tinsley. Then a wealthy, silent donor offered to pay to open school cafeterias during the break. Through the Jewish Federation of Greater Atlanta, the Lions Club Lighthouse Foundation partnered the deal with DeKalb Schools opening two elementary schools to serve hot breakfast and lunch and a snack 
to all DeKalb County students and their families. You asked me what to expect to ha will happen. I expect miracles. Miracles seem to happen around the nonprofit community in Atlanta. DeKalb will open the free food centers on both sides of the county, in Brookhaven at Woodward Elementary and in Stone Mountain at Stone Mountain Elementary. Not every holiday, but three days during each of the two weeks, during Christmas week on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, during New Year's week on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. First and foremost, let's see how many kids we can feed um, during, over the course of the holidays. The goal, of course, is to get kids back in school, better fed, and able to learn. I'm Sally Sears, CBS 46 News. All right, thank you, Sally. And more than 62% of children in Georgia are eligible for free or reduced lunch. Now, the greatest challenge to make sure all those children get a meal is during the summer. Last summer, Must Ministry stepped in to help feed children in DeKalb County during the summer break. The free lunches were made possible by donations from the community and volunteers. A developing story right now out of Washington, one we've been watching closely. The threat of a government shutdown is looming ahead of tomorrow's deadline. The showdown appeared to be over after the Senate passed a short-term funding bill last night. There was indication from the White House that the president would sign it. But then today, late this afternoon, the president said he will not do that without border wall funding. CBS News correspondent Natalie Brand has the details. We're right in the middle of a sort of a meltdown on the part of the Republicans. President Trump told House Republicans this afternoon he will not sign the Senate passed short term Mr. spending Kennedy. measure that would prevent a partial government no. shutdown. He insists any bill must have extra funding for border security, including a wall. After an hour long meeting at the White House, GOP leaders say they will keep working on it. So what we're going to do is go back to the House and work with our members. We want to keep the government open, but we also want to see an agreement that protects the border. But Democratic, Democratic leaders have already said funding Democratic for a border wall is a non-starter. Democrats are not budging on the wall. We favor smart, effective border security, not a medieval wall. Some House Republicans also want to add funding for disaster assistance to the spending bill. That's one area where there could be more common ground with Democrats. We'll see what they come up with. Uh, in terms of disaster assistance. With the deadline just one day away, it's now unclear when the House will even vote on the measure. There's no consensus right now on what the best way forward is, at least not among House Republicans. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now, one thing you likely noticed in 2018, it's the growing number of those scooters all over Atlanta streets. And now Uber, they've joined in on all the fun. We're advocating for your safety by asking what laws are needed to change with the times. We'll be right back.
More of those electric scooters are on Atlanta streets and sidewalks. We've gotten complaints, but a lot of people love them. And now Uber is apparently getting into the game using Atlanta as a bit of a test run. Yeah, right before the Super Bowl, the company dropped off about 200 scooters for its new service called Jump. Now the city council is trying to find a way to regulate the scooters before it's way too late. CBS 46's Brittany Edney shows us where those new scooters are popping up. Just in time for Christmas, these red scooters popping up and zipping by on the streets of Atlanta. They're a good last mile alternative on transit. A lot of commuters are jumping on, and so are companies. The newest arrival, Jump. There are as many as 3,000 scooters on the street at any given time. But they can be an annoyance, the scooter and sometimes its driver. It stopped being a convenience a long time ago, now it's just an eyesore. Atlanta City Council member Michael Julian Bond says these scooters are here to stay. Well, I think this is the wave of the future. The, the citizens have made a decision that they support these, the use of these devices. They're a good last mile alternative on transit. And so I'm not surprised that more people want to come here and do business. But new rules are needed. Uh, they have parties, like parties, like gatherings where they ride, you know, on Sundays in the street. And it's like, that's not what it's for. It's for getting to and from work out of traffic. And as we try to deal with our traffic issues so that we can continue to look at it, uh, study it, and make sure that the industry is growing appropriately and making sure that we're taking care of the safety and welfare of all of our citizens. Brittany Edney, CBS 46 News. Atlanta officials looked at other cities like Chicago and San Francisco to come up with a proposed rule. Council member Bond says he's presenting an ordinance to the city council on January the 7th. Well, a state lawmaker plans to introduce a bill in January that could crack down on service dogs. Yeah, we're going to look at what prompted this action and the concerns that raises. Let's give you another look at traffic out there. Crash is causing problems. This is I-285 near MLK. And you can see the flashing lights there. CBS 46's Julie Smith is working her sources, monitoring things. Julie will have another pinpoint traffic update in just a few minutes. 
CBS 46 is fighting for our vets service dogs. How can you tell the real ones from the fakes? Well, state lawmakers are trying to crack down on people using those fake dogs. But some of the questions concern veterans who want to make sure their disabilities are not exposed in that vetting process. CBS 46's Haley Mason is live with both sides of the debate. Haley. Yes, lawmakers say that the growing number of fake service dogs is posing a dangerous problem in Georgia. The service dog definition by the ADA is that it is a dog individually trained to perform tasks or do work for people with disabilities. But so far that that law needs to be tightened in Georgia, lawmakers say. She's been assigned to a person already. Blake Rashad has trained service dogs for decades and has traveled all over the country to do it. He says he's following Georgia's upcoming service dog legislation, hoping it cracks down on fake dogs. Fake dogs are a, a issue, and I see them out there all the time. And I, I think that they hurt the person with the with a disability. Rashad's service dog Ziggy has helped him through constant depression. He says veterans like himself would benefit from better regulations. And I suffer from depression and uh, dogs have saved my life. State Senator Renee Unterman is sponsoring the upcoming service dog legislation to crack down on fakes. A bipartisan Senate study committee just wrapped its last meeting and is now finalizing its list of recommendations to tighten regulations on service dogs in Georgia. And there's a lot of fraud that's going on, and that's what we're trying to protect people who truly have disabilities. The committee first wants to get Georgia's definition of a service animal in line with the ADAs and possibly criminalize fraudulent claims of service animals. But one area that's raising concern is the idea of possibly explaining your disability to prove the need for a dog. Senator Unterman says the Fair Housing Act allows those questions to some degree. If you really have a disability, you are going to a medical provider and you can show that you, you know, you've, you've had appointments, you have medication. It's a slippery slope, though, for some veterans. Look. With the American Disability Act, you know, I don't have to tell you if I have a disability or not. And, you know, even the fact of making somebody say, hey, you need to prove your disability. In the veteran population, it's so hard to get people just to talk about or acknowledge the fact that they have a disability. Now, veterans say they want the questions to really fall on the quality of training to show that the service dog is actually a credible service dog, not on the person explaining a disability to prove that. Senator Underman tells me the committee will submit its recommendations on December 31st, and they will move forward with possibly forming more legislation on this in the General Assembly in January. Reporting live at the Capitol, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. All right, Haley, thanks so much. We're here to advocate for our veterans, of course. If you know a vet who's not getting the care or benefits they earned and deserve, we certainly want to know about it. Email us, fightingforourvets at cbs46.com, or just call the number right there on your screen, 404-327-3055. Now, CBS 46 Pinpoint Weather, certified Atlanta's most accurate forecast. Well, this rainy, miserable pattern going to last for at least half the day for tomorrow before we transition what should be a pretty nice looking weekend. But our CBS 46 pinpoint radar showing some precipitation. If you look at it just right now, you say, okay, there's the rain here, here. We're okay here, but we're not okay here because we still have drizzle out there. We have fog. We have wet conditions all across the metro area. They'll be reinforced with more bands of rain for later tonight and for tomorrow. But right now from Ella J all the way from Fannin County, all the way down to the Gainesville area, moving toward Banks County, Helen, Georgia, getting some rain and on the south of south and southwest. We're seeing near Carrollton, Heard County, LaGrange, Merriweather County. This rain is lifting to the northeast, so heads up for you folks in Coweta County, in Noonan area, and into the South Fulton. You folks in Forest Park and Tyrone will get some more rain in the next hour or so. Here's the heavy precipitation back into Montgomery that will also be drifting toward Georgia later this evening. The overall pattern shows that the heavy stuff is really lifted to the north and northeast, officially at Hartsfield Jackson, more than an inch of rain since midnight, but we will have these pockets of precipitation moving in with windy conditions, with damp conditions still there, and there's still more rain back clearing Louisiana, moving into Mississippi right now that we'll have to contend with overnight and for half the day for tomorrow. But the good news is there's a clearing line. You see from Wichita to Dallas to Houston, mostly clear skies. So once this finally plays out, we'll get into a much favorable pattern just in time for the weekend. So that's the good news in all this. So let's pinpoint any 
precipitation, any trouble for the next uh, day or so. Here's tonight by 8 o'clock. We have that rain over the metro area lifting to the northeast. Look at this heavy band moving across right around 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning. So morning rush hour could be very sloppy at times as well for Friday. And as it moves out for around 11 o'clock, we'll ease up on some of that precipitation. Still going to be drizzle, still going to be some clouds out there. Certainly thin overnight Friday. I still think Saturday we could start with some cloud cover breaking into some sunshine during the morning hours on Saturday. Current temperatures 50 at Hartsfield Jackson. We warmed to 51. Not much change in temperatures across the metro. When you look at uh, Rome at 50, 51, 50 in Griffin, 53 in LaGrange, 54 in Athens, and 54 in Eatonton. Even in North Georgia, seeing those temperatures generally in the 40s from 48. If you folks in Gwinnett County in Gainesville at 48, Alpharetta, Johns Creek, and Milton with some rain, drizzle conditions, and low clouds. Same for you folks in Canton. Temperatures near 48 to 50 degrees. In Lawrenceville, 48 degrees. Winds are calm, but they will kick up overnight and Marietta temperature of 50 so far 78 hundredths of an inch of rain for you folks in Cobb County with a temperature near 50 degrees. So let's take a look at our forecast for tonight. Going to be rainy on and off. Not going to be an all day rain, but where it's not raining, there might be some drizzle. There might be some fog and certainly some wet conditions out there. Then as we get to tomorrow, it'll end then the weekend. Not too bad. Maybe a slight chance of showers on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. A mix of clouds and sunshine all the way through Wednesday and maybe a better chance of rain, but not too bad with those temperatures 55 to 58. Let's get a check down pinpoint traffic. Here's Julie. Here's an update on that accident on the inner loop in Fulton County, northbound 285, right there at MLK. The good news is the accident has cleared. Folks are moving through there just fine, but the delays are still there as far south as uh, 285 bottom end of the perimeter at I-85. Also, this accident on the top of the perimeter, top end of the perimeter, eastbound 285 at Ashford Dunwoody Road. We still see delays behind that as well. Uh, continuing east on 285, you really start to slow down right here at Peachtree Industrial Boulevard. That continues past Buford Highway, I-85, and all along that uh, inner loop in DeKalb County to Memorial Drive. At that point, you finally get a little bit of relief, but again, keep in mind that inner loop, though, is going to be a rough go. And as you can see there on the bottom left, those are the delays I was talking about behind that accident that has cleared at 285 North and MLK. That's your pinpoint traffic. All right, thank you, Julie. We are following breaking news right now from the Trump administration. Within the past half hour, President Donald Trump has tweeted that Defense Secretary Jim Mattis is retiring at the end of February. The announcement comes just one day after the president announced plans to withdraw troops from Syria. It is a decision that Mattis and the president's other top national security advisors opposed. The president says he will name a new Secretary of Defense soon. Much more on that to come. Also tonight on CBS 46 News at 9 on Peachtree TV, a Super Bowl size controversy. We're tracking this. It's erupted about the halftime show. That is rapper Travis Scott. He's reportedly signed on to perform with Maroon 5 at the big game here in Atlanta. But a number of fellow African American artists are telling Scott, you cannot do this. You have to cancel. One of the biggest stars in the entire music game is on board saying Scott should pull out. We're going to dig into the controversy and have much more tonight on Peachtree TV. Tonight you can watch Blackish at 8, then join us for CBS 46 News at 9. For one man, the granite, the granite rather, countertops he ordered were not what they were cracked up to be. In fact, the cracks, well, they were the problem, and mm. that's when he turned to Better Call Harry. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. A Suwannee homeowner has been working hard to create the ultimate man cave, mm -hmm. if you will. Very important to them. The last on the list, brand new granite countertops. But wait until you see the countertops. It's today's Better Call Harry. Ready? Yep. When Warren Glaive constructed his man cave, he scored big. <laughs> Mr. Glaive's got it all from foosball to the cue ball. There you go. Bullseye, Harry. He designed and did most of the renovation himself. So I wanted the place to feel open. Look around. Oh. The vision for this man cave is in 3D. If the world comes to an end, this is where we'd be. Of course, what would any man cave be without a bar? Look at those granite countertops. Wait, what's that? Is that a crack? You can see the line. <laughs> One end. This is about three feet all the way over. And it goes all the way.